It's time for more money with Matt Moore and Jay Money. Let's start with Joel Embiid. Made his return to the court after not being at shoot around earlier in the day, but had 24 points and a win over the Thunder last night. Jay, what's the ceiling of this Sixers team now? Oh, oh wait, I'm out. Oh, and then no, I'm gonna play. Um, so but no, I'm just messing with you guys. But uh the uh the ceiling for it, it all depends on who they face in the first round, in my opinion. I still think that the Knicks match up really well uh, with the Sixers. Um obviously it, like I said, it depends on who they face up against. Cause if they go up against the books, I do think that the Sixers uh can can hang with the books. But uh going up match up against the Celtics or the uh Knicks is a nightmare matchup for the Sixers, in my opinion. And how how healthy can Joel, uh how healthy or how long will Joel and B stay? healthy he falls on the floor like i've never seen anybody uh before a lot of times he doesn't even have to fall on the floor he's just really trying to um trying to sell the call and that's really how he got injured the first time as well so his health is always the biggest thing for them uh now tyrese max is a little banged up as well they do have the depth i like the trades that they made but um i mean they their ceiling is still not too high like they're still not gonna get past the Celtics, in my opinion i i disagree i think we i wrote about this on action network i've been on here talking about it there was a great price point before MB came back when he started practicing. They were 40 to one to win the entire thing. And that is an absurd price. 20 to one to win the Eastern Conference in the market at one point, just last week. Um, they have a very decent shot when you look at the schedules of making the sixth seed. And if they get the sixth seed, they get the Cavs. And then you have the Bucks who might wind up facing the Heat. That's going to be unpleasant. So the Bucks go from the Heat to the Sixers. And if the Sixers take care of the Cavs, there might be time for Embiid to get healthier and healthier. Yes, the wear and tear matters, but guys do, the further they're removed from the procedure, they will get healthier. And Jay mentioned, like, yeah, he falls down selling that contact. Guess what? He got those calls last night. We're not seeing a differential in how they're officiating Embiid. He's still getting to the line. That's huge. This team also matches up great with Denver. I'm serious. They match up great with Denver. They are one of the few teams that I think have an edge versus Denver in the matchup situation. And if we go down the Eastern Conference list of coaches, you're going to have Eric Spolstra one. Who are you having two? Joe Mazzula? No, thanks. I'll take Nick Nurse. I think the Sixers are live to win the Eastern Conference and win the NBA title. <laughs> wow. You know, I think... Take. That's a what hot were you going to say, Jack? Yeah, it's, it's a hot take. I mean, I think you make tremendous points from a value standpoint. I just don't see it. I just flat out do not see Embiid staying healthy to Jay's point. Let's move on. Uh, something else of note around the league, Malik Monk being out for the rest of the season. He was the favorite to win six man of the year. Jay, do you think he's done enough to still take it home? Yeah, I think he has, but unfortunately, it's all about recency bias. And Nas Reed will obviously get to play these last games, even though it's a little unfair. Like, he's going to be starting. He's not coming off the bench there. So it's definitely a little unfair there. But Malik Monk was like minus 4,000. And then obviously, once he got hurt, it went down to minus 130. So uh, you just got to hope that if you do have a Malik Monk uh, ticket in your pocket, you have to hope that Nas Reed doesn't continue to go to twenty, uh, go for 25 points uh, like he did last night. So I do think Malik Monk is more deserving and something I I figured out with a lot of these awards you kind of it's almost like a two year in one type of thing uh, a lot of times people don't really just come out of the blue winning these you have to build that that resume for the previous year and then really get over the hump the next year and that's something i don't think that uh nas Reed's done so he's a great player he should probably win it next year but this year um even though monk is out for the rest of the season rest of the regular season i still think that it's his award to lose i think it's close i think it's gonna be really close i think nas deserves it but I, I'm always somebody who just doesn't subscribe to the whole, do you score a lot of points off the bench? Like, I want guys to help you win games. Nas Reed helps you win games. That's why the Wolves are where they're at. It's not the only reason, but he's been a huge part of that. He's filled in for Carl Anthony Towns. He is, if you watch these games, you're going to walk away being like, man, that game turned when Nas Reed came into this game. Malik's won, helped the Kings win a lot of games too. He's been fantastic. I think it's going to be really tough because I do think there will be folks that will say, look, Malik was who I would vote for until the last 10% of the season. I don't want to change that now. Recency bias, Jay's right, is very real. And I do think that Nas had more support maybe than the market reflected before that. Uh, this is one, this market has been so messy this season, Maria. I honestly think this could come down to second place votes. 
And so I think this one could really wind up being razor thin, which is why we've seen this market move. I don't think you need to be betting it now. You definitely don't need to be betting Monk at minus 130. This should honestly be probably way closer to just plus 100 on both. Uh, they're never going to price it like that for hold, but I do think that that's maybe where it is. I think this is a coin flip between the two. I personally would have Nas Reed as my sixth man of the year. Fair enough. Reed and the T-Wolves still chasing that one seed in the West, a half game back of Denver. How about best bets for tonight? Jay Money, who you got? Going with Pelicans in the first half, minus the two. Um, I do think they come out here early and often, very pissed off, coming off a loss. This is their fifth straight home game as well. They're in a bounce back J spot as well. They gave up 37 points to uh, to Devin Booker in the first half, gave up 52 points for the whole game. Uh, they gave up, they were down 46 to 28 after the end of the first quarter. Everything coming out of the locker room is that we have to start games better. We can't continue to get behind the eight ball. And the numbers back it up as well. This team is six and one straight up and against the spread this season in the first half at home when coming off of a home loss um it was six and zero before that Suns game as well man so like i say fifth straight home game for the pelicans they are the third best team in the nba in the first half at covering the spread it's sitting at 22 12 and 2 against the spread and this is also the magic's first game on the road after eight straight home games they've been all comfy sleeping in their own beds um i think the pelicans are finna fly on these boys tonight man fly pilly fly you <laughs> took mine i'm on nba <laughs> bet stream tonight with, with Maria Marino for Pell's Magic. And I was so excited to get in on, <laughs> on Pell's first half. And you took it from me. You swooped in oh like a God. carnivorous pelican <laughs> and snatched it out of my hands. How rude. Uh, I will take... Pacers minus seven and a half for best bet tonight. Uh, the Nets have given up on basketball life. This is, they have to beat a team twice in a week, which is typically hard. This is not a basketball team. This is a broken shell of an organization. Uh, usually tanking decisions late in the year are made by front offices and coaches looking to improve draft stock. The Nets don't have their pick. The Nets players are just going that hard for Cancun. This isn't like <laughs> one, two, three Cancun. It's like one Cancun. They're not even doing the two. That's too much for them to get to. So I'll take the Pacers. They've been playing better. Tyrese Halliburton has been, was had a really strong game last night versus the same Pacers team. That's really promising. I'm hoping he can get healthy because I want to bet the Pacers as an underdog in a first round playoff series. I think this is a good spot for them, even with them having to be a team twice and this time on the road. I'll lay the wood with the, Pel with the Pacers minus seven and a half since my P Pels pick was so rudely <laughs> taken from me. Well, the Nets may have given up on basketball life, but you two give me life. Matt Moore and Jay Money, you guys are the best. Thanks for joining the show.